All right, it is slideshow time. Artificially added reverb has been around the recording studio process for nearly as long as recording music has even been around. Studios like Abbey Road have legendary reverb chambers that are little more than a tiled room, a speaker to pipe sound in, and a microphone to record the resulting reflections. Over time, engineers worked out ways to simulate reverb without building an entire room for the task. They've tried spring coils, massive metal plates like the EMT-140 released in 1957 and weighing a half a ton. And by the 1980s, studios had moved on to digital reverb, which offered flexibility even if it sacrificed a little realism in the process. Now, as computer technology has matured, a new type of reverb has hit the scene. Convolution Reverb works by analyzing a recorded sample of a real-world space or object, doing complex pointy-headed math computations to understand how the sound waves are reflecting and behaving, and then applying that analysis to any other signal you've got, making it reflect and behave the same way. You can think of it like physical modeling for reverb. And the results are unbelievably realistic emulations of real-world objects, whether that object is a cathedral, a small speaker cabinet, or even your own living room. The RV7000 Mark II takes the digital reverb you've always loved in Reason and expands on it to include a new convolution engine. So, with our history lesson over, let's see how that works. And more importantly, let's hear how that works. We'll start with the most basic and probably the most common use for convolution reverb, and that is adding a real-world physical space to an instrument to make it feel more live. And what can benefit from big spaces more than drums? So here I've got multi-tracks from Record Drum Takes Volume 1. The recording is very cleanly captured, but it's actually too clean on its own. I'd like to give the snare a little more crack, much like it sounds in a good live room. I could of course add this older RV7000 digital reverb preset called Oak Room on aux one of the mixer, like this. And while it sounds nice, and we've heard this on recordings for decades, it just doesn't sound real. So let's put some convolution on the snare instead. The quickest way to try out some great convolution patches is by downloading the RV7000 Mark II refill, available for free in the Propeller Head shop. In that refill, you'll find RV7000 Mark II presets and a ton of raw convolution impulse responses. We'll get to that in a minute. The name of the preset will give us some indication of the sound we can expect. So based on that, I'm going to load up the Studio B patch. Here's our drums dry, and here's our snare drum now coming to you live from Studio B. You can hear that the effect is a little less pronounced than our digital oak room, which sounded like this. But it's also a million times more realistic sounding. It adds the live quality and the crack that I wanted in the snare without sticking out and calling attention to itself as a reverb effect. And that's perfect for me. This process of setting dry signals into real world spaces works just as well for other instruments. In this piano piece by producer Justin Williams, he has used a convolution preset called My Roommate Won't Stop Listening to Music to take his piano track from a very clinical MIDI sounding piano to something that feels like it's in the same room as you and I are. You can hear in this example that the convolution reverb isn't just about reflections in the way that typical digital reverb is. It's doing more advanced processing that is rounding out sharp transient notes and even adding some tonal shaping to mimic the space our piano now sits in. The secret of this wizardry lies in something called an impulse response. Remember when I told you that convolution reverb works by analyzing a sound file? Well, impulse responses are those sound files. Here's an example of what one sounds like. That is the sound of a starter pistol being fired in York Minster Cathedral in England. Believe it or not, that recording tells a convolution reverb like the RV7000 Mark II everything it needs to know about how to recreate that exact space inside Reason. So if we load a different preset, which has a different impulse response, we'll get a completely different result. 
someone has recorded a sample of a short transient sound coming out of a lo-fi radio speaker. The impulse response sample doesn't sound that exciting when you listen to it, but it means we can take our piano and through the magic of convolution, we can send it out of the same mono radio speaker. I mean, the possibilities when it comes to sound design are just incredible. And the good news is that the free RV7000 Mark II refill doesn't just come with several device presets, it comes with even more impulse responses that you can play around with and experiment with yourself. Want to try a different impulse response of a different speaker? Simply drag and drop one of the speaker impulse responses onto the RV7000 Mark II's waveform viewer to load the new impulse response. We've included a collection of impulse responses from around the web of not just physical spaces or speakers, but also some classic hardware that now comes into reason. You remember that half-ton plate reverb, the EMT-140 from 1957? Well, here it is in many flavors for you as an impulse response. And if all that's not enough for you, the internet is awash in people creating and sharing their own impulse response recordings as wave audio files. And any sound file impulse response you get your hands on can be loaded in just the same way. But why let other people have all the impulse response fun? Using the new live sampling button directly on the front of the RV7000 Mark II, we can record our own impulse responses of our own favorite spaces. My living room has a pretty cool ambient sound. In fact, I've previously recorded acoustic guitar in there to capture that live sound specifically. But now, let's record an impulse response of my living room and apply it to a virtual guitar using A-list acoustic guitarist. Sampling the impulse responses is just a matter of putting up some mics in my living room. I'm using a stereo microphone technique to record a stereo impulse response to ultimately result in a stereo reverb. When I'm ready, I'll click the live sample button and make a loud transient noise, which I can do by just clapping my hands. Once I've recorded the full tail of the room sound, I can click the edit button to fine tune my impulse response in the sample editor. I'll trim the silence off the top and do a little fade at the end. And now we can hear A-list acoustic guitarist, a virtual guitar mind you, playing inside my own living room, which is a real space. Any sound can be used as an impulse response if you're willing to forego realism for futurism. Try loading up hand claps, cymbals, or even guitar samples to create new surreal reverb effects. Good luck, experiment, and welcome to the Convolution Revolution.